Hey, what's up guys, Steven here and welcome to a quick unboxing and first look video on the Ulefilm Power. So this phone is a real battery monster from China, now it retails for around $180, so I've got it from efogshop.com for a very nice price, you can find a link down below in the description. And I would say, let's get directly started and let's do the unboxing. Alright, so here are the specs and this is quite interesting. One of the biggest batteries I've seen in a smartphone, 6050 million hours. this is like a power bank. Combined with the MTK6753, some so quite efficient octa-core processor running with 1.3 GHz, you will get like 3 days of battery life. 3 gigs of RAM, 16 GB of ROM and 5.5 inch Full HD panel, also 2.5D arc screen, so curved glass. We have quick charge, not sure how fast, but we are going to check it out. Corning Gorilla Glass 4. Well, um, most Chinese companies say it's Gorilla Glass, but I'm not always sure, but we're doing a scratch test. Sony IMX240, it's a 13 megapixel sensor, also used in the OnePlus One. Um, with that, you're actually able to capture some awesome looking pictures. We're going to check out how the Ulefilm performs. 5 megapixel front facing camera with Omnivision sensor and 4G dual SIM capability, so that looks pretty good. So there we go, let's do the unboxing. Pretty flat box, just like a Yumi box, and there we go. So at the top here we have the smartphone, here comes the Ulefilm Power coming in a protection bag all along with a sticker with probably IMEI numbers and yes exactly now I've got the white version unfortunately so I don't like the white version so much but this is already a really huge and big smartphone but let's put it beside and let's have a quick look at the accessories we can find here inside of the package and there we go guys so um, wow that charger looks absolutely massive so I'll now just have a quick look at the charger now it comes with the European power socket connector, looks like it would fit in my power socket because for instance the telephone charger um, didn't even fit into my power socket. It has um, 12 volt output too, so it's a 12 times 1.5, that's a 15 watt charger, uh, actually that's 18 watts, oh my god. And here the output, 5 volts, 7 volts, 9 volts, so it's probably using that MediaTek pump or however that quick charging um, feature from MediaTek is called. So that's a really good fast charger in my opinion. Here the USB port straight in, it's very massive, so probably also good heat dissipation, so yeah, it looks pretty good. Um, in the review I will tell you the charging speeds. It comes with an OTG cable for sure, because you could also use the phone as a power bank. The OTG cable is actually used to charge, for instance, other devices from the Ulefilm Power. That's very good. Okay, then here we have um, a headset. Well, I've already had that headset um, with some other Ulefilms and also other China phones. So they're basically all the same, just rebranded. And yeah, um, it comes with a remote control and they sound kind of crappy. So forget that headset. Nice that it's included, but if you're a really audiophile person, um, get something different. Micro USB cable, here in white as you can see, so nothing special. It comes with a micro USB port, and there we go. So here we have some kind of yeah um, case, uh, let's get it out, and there we go. So that's a transparent rubber or transparent silicone, oh my god, that's, that's not so nice. So. It's very weak and yeah, I actually like more the hard cases. This is a very soft case. As you can see, it really deforms. Now, probably offers good protection, but I think it's a little bit too soft. I mean, just check this out. Very, very soft. But um, I'll definitely try it. Then here we have an, um, yeah, an screen protector. So there's one screen protector on the smartphone so far as I can see, and one screen protector inside of the box. And here we have an Ulephone quick starter guide. Now, this one here is multi-language, but only, um, it's for instance, um, yeah, one page per language. And last but not least, because this phone probably has a non-removable back cover, we have here a metal pin for the SIM card tray. So that's everything I could find inside the box, and now let's go and let's have a closer look at the phone. Right guys, here it is, the Ulefilm Power. First feeling in my hands, pretty big, pretty heavy. So it weighs 195 grams. Now, actually, I thought it will weigh over 200, but um, the metal frame is not so thick and back and everything is made out of plastic. So there's a massive battery inside and probably it weighs most of the smartphone. All right, but let's have a closer look here at the phone itself, getting started here with the front side. So we have here capacitive touch buttons. Um, so far as I can see, there is no backlight or maybe it's just very weak. So nope. I don't think that there is backlight, so it doesn't look like it. And um, in the middle here we have like a silver ring which reflects the light a little bit. 
So um, that's good that there are capacitive touch buttons, but I wish they would be backlight. Now, yeah, there's a massive um, black bar here around the display, so this makes the phone pretty ugly. With a black wallpaper you almost don't see it, but um, as soon as you start here an application you can see that big black frame around it. Now, um, actually many um, China phones have that black frame, not a huge fan of that. Okay, now at the top we have the light and proximity sensor, then um, here we have the front facing camera and here we have the earpiece. So I'm not really sure about the notification LED, but we'll check it out a little bit later. Okay, now let's have a look here at the display. So it's in full HD panel and the viewing angles are quite good, so not a bad panel at all. Um, also the blacks are looking good, then if you press here really strong, then the flinching is not so much, so the LCD panel looks pretty good in my opinion. Now let's have a look at the back side. So the back cover is here made out of plastic, it's non-removable so far as I've seen, so there's no slot to remove it. And you can see here the speaker grid at the bottom, so this is pretty big. Ulephone logo here um, sticks a little bit out, so you can feel it. Here we have a fingerprint scanner, um, the problem is, phone is really big and this is very close here to the rear camera. If you don't have pretty long fingers, probably it's not so nice to um, reach it, but yeah, um, for me it's pretty okay and feels good. We have a rear camera with a black ring around it, so just like on the Ulephone Touch or B-Touch, um, and it comes with an IMAX 214 sensor. You can see here the dual LED flash, it looks like two LEDs are inside, so this is a real one. Then let's have a look at the frame. Now the frame really reminds me of the other phone P7000, seems that it's not so thick. Also you, you have seen the weight, so I guess um, yeah, um, the frame is not too thick at all. And here we have the SIM card tray. Dual 4G um, capability, which is very good, and I will now just quickly here remove the, um, the tray so I can show you um, what SIM cards you can put in. So here's the SIM card tray. As you can see, two SIM cards, micro SIM cards, and um, also in this slot here you have the ability to put in a micro SD card, so you can see that's actually in dual slot here. But when you use a micro SD card, you can't use a SIM card anymore, so that's the only bad thing. I actually prefer triple slots. Um, those dual slots are not really what I prefer because I want to use dual SIM and micro SD card, but yeah, um, depends on whatever you prefer. So let's continue now here with the frame, and we just had a look at the SIM card slot, so it looks pretty okay to me. Now at the bottom of the frame we have the micro USB port to charge it, and here a little hole, so that's the bottom microphone of this device. The top features a 3.5mm headphone jack, and here we have an IR blaster with a transparent um, cover here for the LED. So that's pretty cool, IR blaster is really something I appreciate also um, on my old S6 Edge. Okay, now the back side, I forgot to mention it, it has some kind of pattern which looks pretty cool, I hope the camera can catch it. And on the right side of the frame we have the volume rocker, very stiff, not sliding up and down, feels very good. Power button, same thing, and here we have um, some kind of multi-button, so um, this is, for instance, I guess also to trigger the camera. Ooh, there's a picture of me, disgusting. Um, yeah, um, and that button here is in the middle, so I'm not really sure what it can do, so right now it opens up the gallery, probably you can also use it to um, capture pictures, but this would be really crappy, because you see, if you press it, it's in the middle of the device. Oh my god. So that's also the front-facing camera here of the Ulephone Power. So um, it also comes with 2.5D arc screen, so with that curved glass here. Oh yeah, just plugged it in, there is a notification LED, it's very small, didn't see it, so really hidden. So left here from the light and proximity sensor, a very small LED. I wish that this one here would be bigger because, yeah, it's really kind of small. Alright guys, so there we go, we're now in Android 5.1.1 on the Ulephone Power. And yeah, there was a cut in between, so I've now used it for one day, and I want to give you my first impressions. And yeah, I have to say, the smartphone is really good, so I'm pretty impressed. Now on the Ulephone B-Touch, um, there was some kind of delay here in the launcher, so a touch delay, but here, you see, this is really, really fast. I have some issues with the smartphone, so I won't say it's the best smartphone, but yeah, let's go quickly through all that. Now the first thing why I'm so impressed, usually I like to um, stream music to my um, car radio over Bluetooth, and I like to do it from the YouTube application. So the bad thing is, you know guys, if you watch something in the YouTube application, you have to keep it open. And I did this for several hours with maximum brightness, and I didn't even charge it today and to 100%. So the battery life is incredible. It doesn't matter what you do, you could use it 24 hours um, the whole day um, with full brightness and everything. You won't get the battery empty, so the battery seems to be really, really good. And yeah, that's actually why they made the Ulephone Power. 
Now something I want to um, yeah, clarify, it has backlight on the capacitive touch buttons. I'm pretty sorry for that. I have just seen it in the night um, and it's very, very weak. So during daylight you can absolutely not see it. And that's a bad thing, so they should improve that. Now let's go here quickly to the settings and let's check out what we can find here. So there we go. Now here at the bottom you can see about the phone, so it runs Android 5.1. So sorry, not 5.1.1. And here's the lollipop. So so far this is the latest version. Now you know guys, um, Ulephone was a bit slow with providing updates on the B Touch, so I really hope that they are faster here with the um, with the B Power or sorry Ulephone Power. Okay, so um, that's everything here. Um, so far there was no OD update, but they told me it's working, and I'm really waiting for the first OTA update. Okay, um, brightness is now okay. Now let's go all the way up here. So here we have Wi-Fi. We can quickly switch it on, and so far with the Wi-Fi signal, I'm yeah, I'm very pleased. Just check this out here. Here's my office network, getting a good signal, 54 um, Mbits, 2.4 GHz, dual band should also work. And here you can see um, also several other networks, which I can't even find on some other high quality smartphones here. So Wi-Fi seems to be pretty good. And yeah, we have a plastic back cover, so also the antenna layout on the inside seems to be kind of good. Now, yeah, um, we have here Bluetooth. Bluetooth is working, so that's my car radio I was telling you about. Um, yeah, it works really good. We have here HotNot, so this is like MediaTek's own NFC thingy, um, only works between other HotNot devices, but I've already seen um, other um, chipsets running HotNot too, so I'm pretty excited about that in the future. We have here more settings, and as you can see, um, there's nothing more inside. So instead of NFC, you have um, this HotNot thing here. Here under Home, you have different launchers, so it also has the U launcher, but I'm currently using the launcher free, so everything to stock. Um, we can have a look at display settings. There is no mirror vision here inside, as you can see, and no sensor calibration. Here we have storage. Now this phone is a 16 gigabyte phone, all in all 12.33 gigs of usable space. Um, yeah, you have around 11 to 12 gigabytes straight out of the box. So not too much, but at least it supports micro SD cards, but you know you lose a SIM card slot um, when you use the micro SD card. Regarding the battery, it's absolutely incredible. So. Um, today I woke up pretty late, 12, um, and I've just used it here for three hours and was just charged to around 80% because I used a normal charger. Now you need to use the quick charger, otherwise you won't even get it to 100% overnight. So the battery is really crazy. And um, here we have, for instance, apps running in the background. So let's check this out, and there we go. And yeah, the phone comes with 3 gigabytes of RAM and the ROM optimization is pretty good. So we're using almost less than a gigabyte, so with the background applications, let's say a gigabyte of RAM, and you still have 1.9 gigabytes of free RAM. So definitely enough for background applications or games. And the MTK6753 is not a bad performer at all. So yeah, let's check this out. Um, no Chinese apps or bloatware on there, so Ulephone likes to keep it pretty close to stock without any crap pre-installed. We have your gesture unlock, so by default you have double tap to wake up, you have off-screen gestures, so um, if the display is off, then you can just draw something to start, for instance, the camera. Works also here on the Ulephone, and the sensitivity is also okay. So we have GPS, we have security, and here we have the fingerprint sensor. So it feels quite uncomfortable with the fingerprint scanner here, so close to the top, and the phone is also pretty big. Um, a little bit down here would be better. Same goes for this camera button, which is really, really crappy. Um, yeah. So let's quickly um, test here the fingerprint scanner. I will now just enter here pin code 1234, always pretty safe, and there we go. So here you can um, just say if you want to see notifications, if it's locked or not, and yeah, fingerprint is um, initializing. I'm now using it for the first time because I don't like the fingerprint so much. On the B Touch, it was draining um, the battery really fast. So I'm actually excited how it will work on the Ulephone Power. So I will tell you that in my full review because I'm currently using that as my main device. All right, so we have your unlock screen. So you can unlock um, your screen and you can register up to 10 fingerprints. That's pretty good because most applications are just like five fingerprints. Okay, now we have to put our finger on the scanner and there we go. You see, it detects the fingerprint pretty fast. So. That's good. Always rotate your finger a little bit when registering and try several areas um, across your fingerprint. And there we go. And if you want to actually um, improve um, the sensor, so the recognition, then you just um, register another fingerprint like um, this one here. So, But you use the same thing, okay? And there we go. I'll now just quickly do it, then um, I will show you how to unlock. 
So yeah, the fingerprints are registered and I have to say this application looks very, very good. So we have the application log, we have a fingerprint quick start, you can even take pictures with the fingerprint um, scan on the backside. I mean, the fingerprint scan on the backside to take pictures is good for selfies, but um, the button here on the right side of the frame is really crappy to use it as a shutter. Okay, um, now um, fingerprint unlock, so unlock the screen is active and the cool thing is you can also recalibrate the fingerprint scanner, something you couldn't do in some other applications and it really helps a lot if um, the fingerprint scanner is not um, working as it should. Okay, so now let me show you how fast you can unlock. So if you put your finger on that from the black screen, just check this out, I'm not pressing the power button, I just put my finger on the black screen right now and it's unlocked. So it can really be unlocked by um, just putting your finger on there and that's also really fast. So I would say the recognition time is like, um, the recognition ratio is like 9 out of 10 times. And you see it's also pretty fast and you don't have to press the power button, which is good. Then let's go back here to the settings. So that's the fingerprint scanner. So far I really love it, but I can't tell you about um, the battery um, usage of the fingerprint scanner, if there's any battery drain, because you know uh, on the B-Touch um, it really sucked out the battery. We have here different accounts. We have language and input. For sure it's multi-language, probably not the full Android language pack. So you see some things here are missing, but most of the languages, so basically all you can see here right now on the screen are implemented. Okay, that's everything here in the settings. No, no, uh, we have here smart summer tensory. So um, for instance, with the um, um, proximity sensor, you can switch here between pictures in the gallery between tracks in the music player and all that. So um, you can also um, have your flip to mute call answering and if you're in a car for instance. Something I really like um, because I have it in my car mount, usually my car mount is always touching some of the buttons here. But here all the buttons are here at the top. Um, same goes for the shutter button, this additional button here. And um, so my, my mount, my car mount is not touching the buttons and activating some stuff which I think is pretty cool. Um, last but not least, we have here the multicolor LED configuration. So um, red, green, and blue is here, I guess, yeah. It's a um, multicolor LED, but only three colors, so not full RGB. But at least there is a notification LED. So guys, that were the settings, many things to adjust here in the settings. Now let's go and let's have a look at the rest. So as I've told you, the launcher is really smooth and it's pretty close to stock, so actually it is stock. It just came with one page of pre-installed applications, no bloat, that's pretty good. Android status bar, also totally stock, so nothing special here inside. Now I would say, let's quickly go, let's open up the camera application so I can show you how it looks like. That's the rear camera. Now the rear camera looks quite okay, even though it has pretty high noise levels um, in low light conditions. In my review you will see some samples and yeah, um, it has um, pretty many effects. Something which is new here is that button here to um, shoot pictures here with the fingerprint scan on the back side. So you could use the shutter button here on the right side, which I don't really like so much. So you can see it, you just have to press it and you can take a picture. So as I've told you, picture quality when you have good lighting conditions is okay, but in low light conditions, well, not so good. Okay, now something I want to tell you about the shutter button. Now, I'm not really sure what was in their minds when they placed the shutter button here in the middle. I mean, just check this out guys, if I try to take a picture here and I look um, at it from the right side, I just cover here the whole screen. So. Like a normal digital camera, every camera has to shut the button on the right side, so why not here? There is so much space, I mean it's good for the car mount as I've told you, but it really sucks if you have to just put your finger here into the middle to take a picture. So also the Sony Xperia flagship device has the shutter button or the additional button here on the right side, dual stage button, and this one is a normal button just placed in the middle without any software settings to reconfigure it to other things. At least it's cool because you can quickly open up the camera. You just press it and you're back in the camera application. All right, that's the front face, uh, that's the rear camera, sorry guys. Um, you can see here, for instance, in the settings that the maximum picture size is 30 megapixels. So that looks good and looks like the Sony IMAX 214, but we'll definitely verify that. Okay, front facing camera. Now, hello guys, it's me. So um, the front facing camera looks kind of washed out. Just, just check this out, guys, the colors here. Um, I can show you here quickly a picture in the gallery, so a selfie I took outside. Now I know I'm ugly, but the beauty mode um, doesn't really make it better because um, it's really too strong. It gets kind of blurry with face beauty mode and there is no way to adjust the strength for face beauty mode. So I couldn't find the settings right now. If there is something, I will tell you it. Another cool thing here on the right side is that you have that um, yeah, fingerprint button. So press fingerprint to capture and we can try it out. 
So, yeah, oops, I deactivated it, sorry. Um, really confusing here. And there we go. So you see, I can take pictures with the fingerprint. I mean, I wouldn't use that feature at all. I would just press here to shut the button, or probably that button here, but in the middle, it's not really something I like. So regarding the cameras, it looks okay. Um, there will definitely be sample pictures in the full review coming, yeah, I guess, um, at the beginning next week. So that's the camera, guys. Um, yeah, nothing special except of this one here. Also something I want to mention, the LED flash is absolutely strong, and it's a dual one and really almost makes me blind. So that's pretty good. And yeah, let's come to the benchmark. So we'll quickly show you the performance of this device here. And yeah, um, after all this, we'll do a quick gaming test and then we'll end this first look and first day of use video. And the review will come very soon. All right, guys, so here are the benchmarks. 34,000 points, almost in the Antutu benchmark. We can check it out here in the ranking. So place 15. Um, the Lenovo K3 Note, for instance, here, um, 46,000 points, but also runs a different processor, which is um, clocked at a higher clock than this one here. Now here you can see resolution, full HD display, yeah, Android 5.1, 32 bits only. So the 6753 is a 64 bit processor. Not really sure why Uliphone puts on there and 32 bit ROM, but I will definitely ask. Um, we have here a 13 megapixel rear camera, 5 megapixel front facing shooter, all along with the Mali T720 GPU, which is quite okay for um, games. We can have a look here at CPU-C, and there we go. Um, here we have the SOC, so it clocks from 300 up to 1.3 gigahertz. Here the device info, so nothing special in here actually. Here system, there is no root access on the Uliphone power, but if you want to root it, there will be a tutorial online. Um, here you can see the temperatures, so keeps quite cool. Also the battery here, for instance, 27 degrees Celsius, so this is okay, um, even though it's a very big battery. You can see here the sensors, light proximity sensor, also magnetic field sensor, but there is no gyroscope, so this sucks a little bit. Here in the sensor box, you can see all the basic sensors. Magnetic sensor is definitely working, so it shows you the micro Tesla. Um, but there is no gyroscope, so that's a little bit bad. Now, in the MTK app here, it shows that SIM 2 is GSM only, but well, um, I will definitely try if you can have dual 4G on both slots um, with both SIM cards inserted. So, yeah, um, in my full review, I will report back to you guys. Okay, and did a quick speed test, so just, I had no problem with the internet speeds, also got a quite good ping, but this is now on 3G, not 4G, because I still have to set it up. And here, Geekbench 3, 615 single core and around 2800 multi-core, which, yeah, is, is definitely an okay score for the 6753 with 3 gigs of RAM. So now let's do a quick gaming test, and then we're going to end this first look and, yeah, first usage video. So guys, here's the gaming test, and I was just in the mood, hey, this phone is really great, and I love it. Then I had a look at the gaming performance, and I was like, are you fucking serious? I mean, just check this out. Um, for sure, it's in full HD display, but the 6753 with the Mali T720 is not so bad, so it should actually perform okay, but the frame rates here in the game, also in other games, I've rebooted the smartphone, so this is no RAM problem. And I did also clear the RAM before I started the game, and it's really fast in the menu. But if you have a look at the gaming performance, this is not acceptable. So this is probably the worst frame rate I've seen on an MTK6753 gaming. And also the 32 bit ROM, so it looks a bit suspicious to me. Now, Ulefoam, please provide as quick as possible in ROM update to make this phone as smooth as possible. I mean, in the menu it feels really great, but here if you, as soon as you start any 3D application, I mean, I can't really tell you if there's anything wrong with this particular device or all Ulefoam devices because I just have one test sample. But what you can see here right now, this is, yeah, not enjoyable. Other games, Modern Combat 5, other 3D games, Deer Hunter, whatever, it doesn't matter what I play, it's really stuttering, and this is not acceptable. So, except of this and the distorted pictures in Facebook, which I also wanted to mention, I hope I didn't already do it. So, for instance, if I um, go to Facebook, and if I just want to send um, a picture, Let's try to send me here a picture. So yeah, I sent a picture here to my Facebook chat and I'm, I mean, just have a look here at my head. I look like a watermelon. So also something is wrong with pictures um, in this application and I've never experienced that on a smartphone. So probably it's something wrong with the application, but um, I'm not really sure. The ROM is very strange, 32 bits. Gaming performance sucks, even though the hardware is good, and also sometimes distorted pictures in here. So, Ulefone, please provide an update. I really love the phone. I mean, it's great. It's not too big for the battery size. It feels solid, so absolutely nice build quality. Maybe that button here kind of sucks, but the performance, um, the gaming performance, and the 32-bit ROM is not really acceptable for the price. 
Okay guys, um, that's it. That was my quick first look and first test video of the Ulefin Power. An in-depth re review will come as soon as possible because currently using this as my main device because I gave away my S6 Edge in the giveaway and also I don't have any other good devices here. So I'm just using this here right now and I will do a proper review very soon. Stay tuned guys, have a nice day and see you soon. Bye bye.